Hey guys, welcome back to Paracord Planet. I've been putting off this video for close to a year and a half now, and some of you guys have noticed and have commented occasionally on it, and others of you have completely forgotten or don't know yet. Today, we're going to be attempting to finish the Paracord hat. So I began this hat about a year and a half ago, and it didn't start real well. And so I set it aside and COVID happened, we were busy and just never got back to it. In a lot of our past videos, you can actually see it sitting in the background, kind of as a, a subtle reminder that we didn't finish what we started. And a couple of you guys had commented on it, wanting us to finish it and even do a tutorial. And we just kind of brushed you guys off. So I'm sorry, maybe not so sorry but today we're gonna to be finishing it. We're attempting to finish it. So if you're hoping on this being a tutorial, you're probably out of luck and you should go watch a yarn tutorial instead. But if you're gonna make one out of paracord, I can give you a couple things to watch out for while you're making it. So the first problem I ran into while making this out of paracord was that paracord tends to um, get twisted far easier than yarn. Yarn you can twist and it's not going to kink up and things, but when I wrap it around, it just constantly is getting kinks in it. And so I would actually spin it after each row, just to get all the kinks out of my spare paracord to make it ready to do the next row. The other problem is that paracord does not stretch as easily as yarn. And so these loops around the pegs were far harder to pull over the top and I ended up scuffing up my loom a lot more. So while I wouldn't recommend using this loom for paracord, it actually did hold up very well and didn't break on me. If you've watched our spool knitting video, that explains it pretty well. So we'll link that in the description and on the end screen. It's really the same technique. We just go around each peg and then pull one loop over the other. So we're gonna do that with the last round and then cinch it up at the top to turn it into a hat. So while you can draw on my experience from the past with how I made this hat, what I'm doing now is untested and probably ill-advised. So keep that in mind. I wove the, the cord around counterclockwise. I think somebody told me that was the wrong way, but I'm not really sure on that. For this cord now, the end where we left off, we're gonna be stringing that through the other direction and we're not gonna be wrapping it around each cord as we did before, but it's gonna go through each of these last loops. Because this is crochet, if we don't do this, the whole thing is gonna come apart. And, and with how many hours I put into this, don't really want that to happen. And that's also why I'm not doing this twice. Just take a length of cord, enough to fit entirely around the top of the hat. Maybe a little bit of extra after that. And then we're gonna be going around this way, bringing our loose cord to the bottom of the hoops this time. And reaching down from the top to pull that cord up through. Once we have a loop there, I'll zoom in a little bit close. Then we can pull that loop through. And instead of keeping a loop to attach the next round to, we're just gonna pull the end all the way through. So now that loop can't come undone. We'll just keep on going around the edge, doing the same thing. All right, so that went okay. Now we have to get this off of the loom somehow. And I'm not really sure how to do this. This is extremely tight now with that added cord in there. It was already tight and took a long time to do each row of this. So I might have to use this feature of the loom where we can actually pull a peg out. I don't wanna do that for all of them, but might need it to get us started. There we go. Now that's a little bit looser, maybe we can get it going on the rest. I think once we get it started, we'll be fine, but 
this is a trick. There we go. Then each one should be successively easier as we pick up that slack. Okay, we were done with that. And now comes the moment of truth, seeing if we can cinch down the top. So if I did this right, I should be able to pull on this string and it'll all kind of come together. Eh, I don't think we're gonna be able to get it tight enough though, is the thing. I'll start back halfway. Try to put that around. It might be cold with a hole like this on the top of your hat. So because of the thickness of the paracord, that is as small as I can cinch it down, or just about. I can go a little bit more. There we go. Okay, that's not awful, but not great. Yep, that is the absolute tightest I can go right there. Well, let's try something different. I'm gonna back it off a little bit and we're gonna go back around and do one more loop through, but just catching it at a couple key points. Um, you've probably seen stocking caps that are kind of um, pinched in a, a star shape. So that's gonna be kind of what we go for here. So that's actually not looking too bad. Kind of have that cross shape I was going for. And then in one of the tutorials I watched on, you know, doing this with yarn the right way, they turned it inside out at this point. So I'm just gonna see how that looks, if I can even get it turned inside out. Oh, no problem, there we go. Yeah, that's rather nice. Looks like the, the bottom of a pop bottle. <laughs> Okay, so that's it's looking like a beanie now. We just need to finish off that end so it's not gonna loosen. And we'll just do that kind of the typical paracord way. So I'm gonna turn it back inside out and cinch that down tight. And then I'm just gonna tie a couple knots. Um, I'm not gonna be particular about what I tie here. Um, but at the end, we just want it to be a tight knot that we can clip the cord right next to and melt it so that it's not gonna loosen. So I just want to tie it until I have the, the final cord coming through a tight spot. So these half hitches aren't going to quite do it, so I'm going to um, tie a couple more here. Cinch down my previous ones. And we'll go through that same one one more time. I know you guys can't quite see what I'm doing here, but Again, not super exact. We're winging it. There we go. I'm happy enough with how tight that is. So we'll just clip it. No going back after this. And before that has a chance to pull through, I'll just melt that right next. That should be sufficient. Back to right side out. So this is looking pretty small. Um, I did try it on about halfway through the project and it just barely fit on then and I think it looks even smaller now. Part of the problem is that paracord, like I said at the beginning of the video, it doesn't stretch like yarn does. And so while 
yarn hat made on this size of loom would probably fit my head. This one has such a tight weave that it's not able to stretch that much. So if your head is larger than normal, I would suggest finding a <laughs> different loom to use um, for paracord. This will work great for yarn and is actually very durable as I said earlier. So with that said, this was sort of a success. It is a hat, it is indeed a hat, but we just need to find somebody that it fits now. Um, I don't think it'll keep anybody very warm in the winter either, but that's beside the point. We're, we're done with the hat project and I'm happy about that. We definitely plan on doing more of these large scale, ridiculous projects throughout the summer. So if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe. And hopefully this next project of ours doesn't take us a year and a half to complete. Thanks for watching guys, and we hope to see you around. So here goes nothing. Yeah, there's no way my head's gonna fit in there. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>